You can hear my mother win. And a whole lot of scrapping in those chairs. And I don't know what it is, but there's definitely something going on upstairs. This is what I'm going to be fishing in. <laughs> Jesus. Welcome and join me as I fish the beautiful Lake Clayvavat in search of big, busty brown trout. And in the process, discover the meaning of love and life and why. Yes, I discover why. Stay tuned for more adventures. got my nine foot seven weight sage method and I'll be starting off with a circus peanut olive and white this fly has caught me some of my largest browns it's a great fly for Iceland and I'll be using a stripping basket because the waves are intense this looks like the ocean and I hate not fishing with a stripping basket the line I'll be using is the single hand spay Triple density again. It's a great line. It's one of my favorites. And then we've got this beauty. Spectrum Max Sage Reel. It's awesome. Should be able to handle these browns. It's quite windy, but it's very beautiful. Stripping baskets are not very popular in Iceland. But look, waves. My line's sitting right there, ready to be cast out. More people need to use these babies. This is quite ridiculous. Took a little break. I thought the wind would calm down a bit in the evening. But it's only picked up. What the fuck? What the fuck, man? Woo! I have found my limitations. 60 mile per hour winds and snow and rain and hail. That's where I draw the line. Jesus. No more. No more of this. I'm going home for the night. So day two at Lake Klevervat. We're gonna try to find some big browns. The wind is basically non-existent compared to yesterday. So hopefully that's a good sign. I was uh, blown away yesterday. <laughs> compared to yesterday, fishing today is like fishing in the Bahamas with no wind. Bahamas are cold. Culinary section of this video brought to you by a very dry bread, cheese, and salami. Mm mm mm. mm. Nailed in the balls with a fucking wave. Holy shit. Holy shit, my balls hurt. Damn stripping basket. Damn you. Hello, sunshine. People ask why you would buy a $900 fly rod. Well, this is why. There's no better rod in my opinion, to cast into the wind than this little beauty right here, the Sage Method. It casts big flies into the wind with almost minimal effort, 60, 70 feet out. But that's not something you're gonna get from a 100 to $300 rod, you know? 
Like you might be able to somehow get the line out, but if you don't want to waste half the time just getting some line out, this is the rod to get. It's my favorite rod. The flies that I'm using, while you won't see them in any fish's mouth so far in this video, I have some sticklebacks that I tied up, you know, just kind of muddler style. And then I've got bigger flies. They look like some bigger brown trout fry or bait fish. Here's a sexy looking circus peanut. Two it's a single articulated, so it's two, two hooks. Uh, it's a pretty simple fly. It's almost just like two woolly buggers, but it's also got the, a lot of rubber legs and this fuzzy um, flash and eel head. This thing slays brown trout. I love this fly. This is my favorite fly to use for brown trout. Now I'm at the other end of the lake, the south end. And back there, there's a there's a bay, a shallow bay where there's a bunch of uh, hot springs. So as you can see, the water is uh, a lot more colored here than it is where I was fishing earlier. That's because uh, the wind is stirring up a bunch of shit in the bay and blowing it out here. So that's, I'm hoping that the brown trout. We're just kind of sitting here. There's a lot of nice structure. We're waiting for uh, stuff to blow out of the bay. Assuming the sticklebacks follow the plant matter that's being blown out, and they'll be sitting here waiting for food and hot water. So, I also switched to a kind of stickleback imitation, super tinsel. You know, it's just a lot of flash, really simple fly. It's just one wing, but, you know, it should catch fish. I think it's time to call it a day. I've been here for something like 10 hours. Not a touch, and I've just been casting into the fucking wind all day. No bueno. Sometimes it's not sex, drugs, money. Money, no. Rock, I don't know. Sometimes it's not that. Sometimes it's just getting blown and not by a girl. I got blown today. Day three. Lake Cleorvat. She might see the weather as so. a lot lot better so i'm using the chance to explore some more other other parts of the lake i'm out on this big peninsula here rocky point kind of thing and there's a nice kind of a sheltered beach down here so i'm gonna fish that right now starting off with the trusty circus peanut same same tools as always as far as eye-pleasing scenery goes, this isn't too bad. Damn. Well, the weather turned bad again. I've now seen uh, three different groups of fishermen come, fish for like 10 minutes, and then drive back towards Reykjavik. This, uh... This tests the soul and the spirit of the fishermen. Look at that rain cloud. Jesus. That looks fun. <laughs> Jesus. That's not pretty. That's not pretty at all. That concludes three days of fishing this lake. Three days. Not a sign of fish. No touches and very unforgiving wind. Um, I will be back though, hopefully with a little bit more success um, because there's big brown trout in this lake and I want to catch some of them and I almost promise that I will. 
I need to get new waders as well. These ones leak horribly, as you can see. This is all wet. This is dry. My knees are dry. My feet, like my toes, and then my groin area is all wet. That is not good. So, the water is about 3 to 4 degrees Celsius. And that's really cold. I cannot feel my feet anymore. So, that's number one on the grocery list. But, yeah, I will be back. Lake Klebervat. I promise that I'll answer why. It was a three-day weekend. And I wanted to fish. That's why. Get laid. Larry made his nest up in the autumn branches. Built from nothing but high hopes and thin air. He collected up some baby blasted mothers. They took their chances and for a while they lived quite happily up there. It came from New York City, man, but he couldn't take the pace uh, And thought it was like a doggy dog world And he went to San Francisco, spent a year in outer space uh, with his